Week one has officially arrived and we are gearing up for a full slate of games, but right now we're here to talk about a big one in the state of Florida. You've got Gators and Canes. So to help us break down one of the biggest games on Saturday are our friends David Lake from Inside the U and Jacob Rudner of Swamp 24-7. Let's tell you a little bit more about this matchup. It's one that we have not gotten in a very long time. It's the battle for Sunshine State supremacy. Miami leads the all-time series by two wins, while Florida is trying to buck the unfortunate and historic trend of three straight seasons with seven plus losses. That is the longest uh, streak in school history. Both teams though, desperate for this one and O start. So let's start with the rivalry. It's incredibly important to the sport of college football, but this is the first time we get this in the swamp since 2008. So let's start with the hosts. Jacob, what makes this specific matchup such a significant one in this rivalry? Well, there's no question that this is one of those matchups that's going to serve as a very early barometer for both teams uh, to show where these two coaches stand. Mario Cristobal, Billy Napier, both in their third year. Billy Napier, like you mentioned, back-to-back -back seasons with seven losses. He's 11-14 and 14 since taking over as Florida's head coach. And this is one of those games that Florida fans are really going to care about. They want to beat Miami. They want to beat Miami, especially because this game is at home. And whether or not Napier is able to do so is probably going to go a long way in determining how exactly they feel about whether or not his tenure is headed in the right direction. So is it a week one game? Is it kind of early to really make those kind of determinations? Yes, I do think so. Uh, but from an emotional standpoint, there's no question that this game matters a whole bunch for the Gators, for their fans, and for Billy Napier himself. Yeah, and for me, you know, I'll lean into the rivalry aspect of this game. It's, it's the biggest one because it is the next one. And as you were saying earlier, Emily, that uh, they don't play often. Uh, they've played once in the last decade, and that game was a neutral site game. Uh, so this game's, you know, back on a uh, at the Swamp at, at the University of Florida's home stadium. And so uh, it's back to that kind of traditional college rivalry type feel. And uh, we don't know when the next game between these programs is going to be. There's nothing scheduled in terms of regular season. So at this point, it would have to be a postseason matchup. And, and as we know, college football is all about rivalries, bragging amongst your friends uh, that are fans of, of the other in-state schools amongst the big three, whether that's Miami, Florida, Florida State, which team is the best in the state that year. I think this is a year where it all gets played out on the field. Well, now that we have set the scene, let's talk about the matchup, starting with the quarterbacks. Graham Mertz is back for his second year in the Swamp, but he has company right behind him by way of five-star quarterback DJ Lagway. So, Jacob, what should we expect from the QB room in game number one? Well, I think that with DJ Lagway's hype, it might be easy to think that this is a situation where Graham Mertz does have company where there has been competition, uh, when in reality, it's been quite the opposite. DJ Lagway, for as good and talented and hyped up as he is, is clearly Florida's backup quarterback to Graham Mertz, who led the Southeastern Conference in completion percentage last year. Uh, he proved extremely efficient. Uh, he knows Florida's offense at an incredibly high level, and most importantly, Florida's coaching staff trusts him implicitly. They view him as the leader of this team, Billy Napier has gone as far as to say that it is his team. And so while DJ Lagway is in the fold, I still think that Graham Mertz is going to be Florida's clear number one quarterback. There may be some packages for DJ Lagway to show off his athleticism and add sort of a dynamic element to this Florida offense. But at the end of the day, it's a clear starter backup situation with Mertz and DJ Lagway. All right, on the flip side, Miami won out on the Kim Ward sweepstakes. They bet or they beat some rivals for him and the NFL for him. So, David, how have you seen him fit into this Miami locker room so far? Yeah, it didn't take long, honestly, for Cam Ward to emerge as the unquestioned leader. Uh, he came in in the spring, went to work in a quiet way and uh, proved it with his play on the field. And from that point, he went on to take on more of a vocal leadership role. Mario Cristobal regularly calls him a, an alpha personality, and he's been impressed with the way Cam Ward has set the tone during practices for the offense with his energy. And he also just raises the competition level out at practice from the defensive side with the competitive trash talk uh, that, that he go, goes at with the defensive side. So uh, he is definitely a much more assertive personality compared to the start, starting quarterback last year. And as far as you know, where things are from a cultural standpoint, uh, Miami feels like things are right where they want them 
uh, at that quarterback position. I always love it when the QB is dying <laughs> with the defense. Uh, along those same lines, let's talk about the defense of both of these teams. I think it's safe to say the secondary is a story for both sides. Florida gave up the most explosive plays through the air than all that one FBS team last year, while Miami, they had a big time transfer. So let's start with David. Uh, how can each of these teams test the other's secondary on Saturday? Yeah, so everyone can can go look at the stats from last year and, and see what Florida's uh, lack of production was in the secondary relative to the pass defense. Uh, I think that was last year, though. And so I'm not necessarily expecting that type of performance this year. I think Florida's secondary does have talent. I think Miami respects the talent that they have. And look, I think operating a passing game in game one in the swamp is a tremendous challenge. So with all that said, though, Miami does bring some serious firepower uh, to the passing element of their offense. We talked about Cam Ward. They also returned three starting wide receivers with 800 yards of production uh, last year, each one of those guys having 800 yards. They're the first team to do that. Uh, have that type of returning production since Houston in 2010 and the last power conference to do that since Texas Tech in 2006. So do they necessarily have a wide receiver one? I don't I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. But they feel like they can kind of overwhelm an opponent with their numbers. And I think Florida thinks that it can overwhelm its opponents throughout this season with its speed. That's kind of something that this coaching staff has held hung its hat on. Uh, in its third offseason in Gainesville. Florida feels as though it is faster across the board, and at no position is that more apparent right now than wide receiver. Eugene Wilson is back for his sophomore year. He's one of the fastest guys on the team. Chim Ray DK transferred from Wisconsin. He's one of the fastest guys on the team, and the list goes on. Aiden Mizell, Khalil Jackson, Marcus Burke, Tank Hawkins, TJ Abrams, all these guys build out Florida's wide receiver room and give them a unit that they think can test secondaries unlike the ones in the past. And in no other area do they hope that that's more apparent than in the deep passing game. Last year, Graham Mertz attempted just 39 passes that traveled 39 or more yards, excuse me, 39 passes that traveled 20 or more yards through the air. He completed just 16 of them. Uh, and this season, they know that they're going to need to be more explosive. So my expectation is that we see that right away. I think Florida tries to take the top off of this Miami defense and utilize that speed element that it's starting to feel really good about. Guys, it's been a long off season. Thankfully, we've had a video game to hold us over, and so we actually simulated this game 20 times on the video game. And Florida came away with 12 wins to Miami's nine. So that's going to be the question here for each team. Make the case, starting with Jacob. Why does Florida need this win more? Well, I think it goes back to what we talked about at the outset of this, which is that Billy Napier needs to finally prove that his team is able to win the big game. I understand that Florida has been good at home. It beat Utah in Napier's first game as Florida's head coach. But the reality is, is that its amount of statement wins since that game have dwindled. They do not win a lot of these statement opportunities. And this is one of the biggest, if not the biggest so far. So uh, I think that the pressure is on for Napier to start his season off on the right foot. They need to prove to fans that this is the most improved and effective team that he's had so far in Gainesville in three years. And the reality is this. They cannot have another losing season. Uh, and I think it will be a tone setter for them if they can get a win against Miami in week one. And yeah, from a Miami standpoint, look, I think on paper, everything looks great for Miami. They're ranked number 19 in the preseason polls. I think on paper, they have the best roster in the ACC, and they have a legitimate chance to go earn a spot in this expanded college football playoff. Again, that is on paper. And uh, this, in a lot of ways, is a barometer type of game for this Miami team to go out and prove it on the grass. Miami brought in Mario Cristobal as a head coach uh, a couple years ago to get Miami to the point where they are legitimately, consistently competing at a high level, uh, pushing for legitimate playoff uh, and postseason type games. Uh, Miami has largely been nationally irrelevant over the last 20 years, and this win can kind of set the tone, uh, get some positive momentum going in the early part of this season, and uh, allow things to kind of settle into what they feel like is a favorable ACC schedule as well. 
do want to specify, I think I said 12 wins to 9, which does not equal 20. Um, I'm not in week one form, but I will be ready. Don't worry. Clearly, both of you guys are ready to go. And thank you so much for previewing this matchup. I cannot wait for this one. If you want more coverage from both of these teams, keep it locked in to Inside the U for all things Miami football and Swamp 24-7 for everything you need to know about the Florida Gators, the writers, the whole crew. They have you covered all season long. Thank <laughs> you.